Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokémon White version! Last time, we went into Gear Station, saw the Battle Subway, and all the little ins and outs about it, including some surprisingly easy money-making tips that even your puny little level 20 Pokémon can totally handle. Pretty helpful area! This time, we're gonna be getting on with our travels and heading out of Nimbaza City! By doing what else but going back into Gear Station within Nimbaza City? Yeah! There's a few things here that are not related to the Battle Subway that I would like to show you. First off, one of the absolute best pastimes when you're not battling in Gear Station is getting to look at the Wi-Fi train. Because that's really all it's good for these days. But uh, hey, ever the optimist, you can't argue that the Wi-Fi train is really good at being looked at and not much else. But uh, seriously, over here, the Brown Line. Platform for trains to Anvil Town. We want to take that. You say anything special? Okay, no, you're, you're not like a shop. I was about to say, if you're on your own, does that mean I have to go over items in every single one of these? Thank God, no. Uh, yes, I would like to go to Anvil Town. This is an optional town that you can only access from Gear Station. If I show you the town map, you can see it's just this little tiny speck in Northwestern Unova. I played through this entire game twice without knowing that this place existed. <laughs> it's that out of the way and just that optional. The only way that I found out about it was because this song was on the official soundtrack that they released on iTunes. And when I listened to it, I was like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool that there's like an unused track that they included. And then somebody corrected me on it months later. It was really funny. We have a flute player that when you stand close to her, you hear how the song should sound all of the time, quite frankly. Well, sheesh, he go much. <laughs> oh, are you also curious about that train? Alrighty, let me explain. Ah, train explain. This is super single train is a new mass-produced car. It's an environmentally friendly train because they revised all the parts to drastically reduce power consumption. Newer trains have to be built in a way that's both functional and environmentally friendly. Compared to the past, they've improved significantly. Every day there will be a different train on the turn turnstile right there, and he will tell you what it is like. You can see all the different trains that are in Gear Station through, well, this method. A lot of train cars have a rest here. It's just kind of a little village that's built around the rails. The girl on the bridge, she's playing a lullaby for all the sleeping trains of this town. And this song is actually called Lullaby for Trains, which I thought was a really, you know, really cute name for it. I haven't talked about it yet, but one of my favorite things, hands down about black and white, is just how different every town feels. Not just in the fact that there's an Ultra Ball that makes you really remember this optional town that you might not have cared about otherwise, no, but the fact that every single town has its own theme. There has been no reused music from town to town up to this point. Even something as minor as Accumula Town that you have no reason to go back and revisit, that had its own theme song. Every town theme has been great and very distinct from the others, and I can't imagine just how much work that had to have taken. Even this little tiny nobody baby town out in the boonies has its own theme, and it's great. She's telling us about star piece collectors on weekends. Must be easier for them to collect their items because people who are tra trading different items come here. Well, all right. This town doesn't have a whole lot of exciting things going on right now. Pretty much everyone has been telling us, come back on the weekends, come back on the weekends. This can be done on the weekends. It's more exciting. Oh. I work as a depot agent on the Battle Subway. Have you tried challenging the Battle Subway yet? Indeed we have. I'd say we did quite well. Uh, lost and found items. No one ever came to pick up this item, so I'll give it to you. Rare candies! Whoa! I had good karma for being good to my simmies here. Holy crap. How many is that? How many is that? You gave me two. Wow, I made a net profit. Then again, maybe I shouldn't celebrate too terribly much because that's kind of the lowest amount he could have possibly given me while it's still being rare candies. That is the best possible item he can give you. Every time you've won at least seven battles on the battle subway, does not matter which train, he can give you a rare can he can give you rare candies, full restores, max revives, which fully revive a Pokemon from being fainted to full health, or any of the various vitamins that give you effort values and different stats. Anvil Town is famous for its turntable. You saw it from the bridge, right? How could you miss it? How about we watch TV? There's not really a whole lot going on in this town, so let's check it out. Asusa. 
ニトルニーニクノノヨイソル昨日さ美味しいパスタ食べたんだけどさニンニクがすごく効いてて手だのように息を止めているの私のせいじゃないようにとるなんで今日はそんなに静かなのそんなにのよあれいえなに What? No way! We're rolling? Hello, Mina! P please watch Kokan talk okay, again, okay? Sayonara! Well, that's two minutes of my life that I'm never getting back, and I am sorry for blowing your ears out. <laughs> sorry, whenever I just see foreign languages, I gotta try my best to read them, which is very poorly. <laughs> well, in this town, it's quite quiet normally. How about we see what it's like on the weekends? Much better, wouldn't you say? Yeah, tourists ruining this peaceful town. I love it. Uh, you're not gonna talk to me. Wow, you really want nothing to do with me. What delicious air! Not the one you're breathing out. You can trade lots of items. It was surprisingly fun when I tried. Trainers are so cool. Mom brought me, but now she's taking pictures somewhere. Sounds about right, getting locked up in that. and ah, I'm in trouble. I'm so engrossed in my trip that I ran out of escape ropes. Let me see, will you trade your two escape ropes for my one revive? You bet I will. I have a little pup that won't stop bringing random cut up ropes back and that's kind of questionable. Great, let's trade. Got rid of the evidence. <laughs> it was a delightful trade, wasn't it? Uh, he will let you keep doing the same trade over and over again. I believe the items are more or less random every single week whenever you come here. Yeah. Do I, let me see how many escape ropes I have. Cause I think I might actually have more than I would ever possibly need. I got five. I can definitely afford to give away two more of them in return for a revive. Who knows? Might save me in the middle of a dungeon when I don't want to go back and heal. Why do people love trains? Maybe it's the design, the way they can run so fast and still be so comfortable. All the essential parts work together. It's simple, but so beautiful. It's like art. There are a lot of people. I feel that, I feel that the trains are happy. I'm a star piece collector, yes. Let's have a business-like exchange. This guy will let you trade your star pieces that you obtain from the challenge rock for some really good items. It might be advantageous to hang on to them for this purpose. If he doesn't have an item that you particularly want, such as in this case with me, there is another way to unload your star pieces for something better than the regular sale price in shops. So still hang on to them anyway. With a face, I bet you want, I bet you have something I want. Will you trade tw your 20 Pokeballs for my one? No! Screw you! I need those things for catching legendaries in stupid, zany ways. Can't be doing that. I wanted to get a picture from this angle. Actually, no, I think one of these houses has something more to it. No, well, doesn't seem like there was. So, Anvil Town. Nice little, tiny town, just out of the way and... I kind of appreciate it. Just the fact that it's so tucked away, you might not have ever been here. You don't really have any reason to go here. You just gotta find it on your own, which you might have even spent a lot of time in the battle subway and not known about it just because of how remote it is and you just never thought to check that brown train or whatever it was. There's a couple of NPCs that mention it, but again, very, very remote. And I appreciate the fact that they went to all the trouble to make such a beautiful song for such a little remote location. It's like a secret little hideaway. Pretty nice little tucked away place. We'll be back to listen to the music whenever we're done with our travels today. Don't worry. And uh, let's head out. I love walking up the stairs sideways. <laughs> I know it's a limitation of the four directional sprites, but it just looks so awkward when you imagine what walking upstairs sideways would be like, especially fast like that. Um, I guess now, uh, first off, bike. Second off, we're gonna leave town to the east. Let's train Pokemon vigorously. You who like training and you who don't like training. Let's train our Pokemon by giving them these. Macho Brace, that will double the effort values earned in battle, but will cut the Pokemon's speed in half temporarily while it is equipped. Also, I gotta say, you got pretty eyes, buddy. Just the greenish blue that they use for your eyes. You look really, really nice. I just kinda had to see it from the front there. Uh, what do you say? A camper has been parked in the Lost Lorn Forest in Route 16. I wonder how long it's been there. Oh, I, I thought you meant a camper is in the person camping, not a camper as in a camper is in the car, you know. 
Uh, we're gonna get started here on Route 16 by getting to some battles. I'm patrolling. I will check your strength too. Starting off, somebody got a new nickname. I wonder who it could be. Sometimes more simple nicknames are better. And in this case, I decided to go with that logic. So, Arkin is now nicknamed Rock. Pleased to meet ya. I have a few reasons for why I chose to go with this in the end. It is a mythology reference, and Arkin is of course prehistoric, but it's also a rock type, and that lends itself well to wordplay. You see that I like wordplay, right? <laughs> this was first suggested by Triforce Zard on Twitter, but was suggested by many people. Thing going on with this battle, we're gonna switch for Haywire, because he's the only one who isn't level 27. She's the only one who isn't level 27, still getting a little bit used to having half of my team be female. Even though it's been a while and that's been the case. Uh, wow, you are very close to leveling up there, Haywire. Let's go for the shockwave. You've been pretty good to me. Oh, I say that and then... Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh! Here I am, trying to talk about what I've thought about you, and you're just not letting me. Okay, Terabyte, how about you go in and I guess you could steal her thunder. <laughs> Gonna go for the dig, just go for the same type of attack bonus. I probably actually should have gone for bite because it would have done more damage across two turns, but maybe it wouldn't have gotten the KO right away and I could have avoided damage. Yeah, we'll just kind of look at it like that, pretending that that's totally the case. Even though I have no way of knowing, I just like to make myself feel better. You were so strong, I couldn't help falling back. Terabyte, you've just been wrecking so many fights lately. You're great. Anyway, uh, I need to go heal, but we also need to talk about the new Pokemon that we can encounter in this area, because there's a lot of them. Er, before we do, one thing that I want to make clear is that there's multiple Pokemon on Route 16 that I want to catch for various purposes, but we have a lot to go over in a small space, so to keep things from being too busy, we're going to skip for now. All right, all right, let's rip off the bandage first. Lightbird! I didn't like you on Route 2 when your only competition was Lillipup, and I especially don't like you now that you're competing with Sandile and Scraggy for being a good dark type. It's meant to be a mixed sweeper, but its moves are pretty bad. Thankfully, if caught here, it starts with Fake Out, and it outspeeds a lot of things, but it's pretty lacking long term. Its total stats are very low compared to pretty much anything else, and we've had better dark types available for, what, three areas now? Next! We're moving on to a brighter place, a place called Minchino. That doesn't make any sense. Um, regardless, it has good speed and it gets even faster, plus gains respectable attack after evolving. This is a one-trick pony, or chinchilla. I seem to be favoring that terminology a lot lately. I better knock it off because, you know, it doesn't really make any sense for anything but Blitzel. But you want Technician for its ability. It learns Tail Slap pretty quickly and can be taught Rock Blast and Bullet Seed after it evolves. These are its bread and butter. It uses two to five hit moves a lot, gets the buff from Technician, and makes every hit stronger. Even though the total base power is going to be higher than 60 after just three hits with these moves, it's a technicality that lets you get around the rules of the ability and use relatively high power moves with it. Another fun trick with it is using that scope lens that we got back in Castelia because it rolls for a critical on every individual hit for those moves. Yeah, it's all right, and definitely something fun if you want something different. Very rarely, you can find the fully evolved Chinchino and rustling grass around these parts, but I wouldn't count on it because it's just so rare, and even if you do find it, it's not overly worth it. It'll have Tail Slap, Sing, Tickle, and Helping Hand with no other moves through level up ever because it's a stone evolution. It can be taught those other good moves later on, but you're better off just getting a Minchino and learning its moves through level up since you're gonna obtain the shiny stone for it soon anyway. Next up, only in black version, is Gothita. Remember Muna? Well, whether you do or don't remember the walk in cookie jar. So continues the trend of Gen 5 having lots of psychic type tanks. Of all things, this is a special wall, cause you know, it totally looks like one. It starts with Psy Beam, which is pretty great, and it gets Psy Shock and Fan Attack in the near future. We just gained the ability to buy Reflect and Light Screen TMs, so it has good timing in that way. Even better than that is that it can learn the Thunder Wave TM that we just got as well, so it can lay down its buffs very easily. As for downsides, I think a support Pokemon like this works best in double battles, and there aren't a lot of double battles being done around Unova. 
It's not bad, but due to singles just being the common battle format, consider how good it is as a wall instead of a support Pokemon, which it's not lighting expectations super brightly at these levels, and you'll have more opportunities to catch this family later where it'll be more capable. And since we got a Pokemon only in black version, conversely, there must be a white version Pokemon, Solosis! This single-celled organism is a high HP wall because, you know, it totally looks like one. Magic Guard is one of the best abilities in the game. Not many Pokemon have it, and it's just a better version of Overcoat. No contest there in which ability that you're gonna pick. Out of the box, Solosis is pretty bad. It can be caught at level 25, which will allow it to come with Psy Shock, and getting that is pretty necessary if you wanted to do any solo fighting. <laughs> Since the only other starting attack it'll have is Hidden Power, which has random typing and random base power based on the Pokemon itself, you can't guarantee that it'll have a good Hidden Power while also having the nature and ability that you want. It makes catching it at those low levels a massive crapshoot. It actually has amazing special attack, and learns great special moves later on too. I should probably mention that Solosis is a Pokemon that I would consider far better in Versus than for the journey. It's a great user of the Life Orb, which gives it all of the benefit of the damage increase, but without any of the recoil damage thanks to Magic Guard. You could go and get the Life Orb right now from the Battle Subway, something you could totally do, but you'd be there for a very long time, and you could probably raise something else within that amount of time. It's also known for being one of the greatest Trick Room users in single battle, but by the time you can teach it to it, there will be practically nothing left for you to do. I can't oversell how great it is because of those things, but they're practically off the table, so if you want to use it, don't use it for those reasons. And we're not done yet. Trubbish. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's time. This guy. I think he's underrated! Okay, so the pure poison type is a nice for type for common resistances, like you didn't see that one coming from me, Mr. I love poison types. One might be inclined to think that it's trash because, well, it is, but its stats are okay all around. It's mainly used as a tank with decent speed, which is kind of unique. It learns stockpile around the current levels, which is basically cursed without the speed drop, but it can only be stacked three times. It stacks up stockpiles and then can outspeed some other tanks to hopefully flinch them with that stench ability. The worst part about Trubbish is that it barely learns any good physical moves at all, despite what its stats would have you think. Pretty much all of its good attacks are special, so it's often limited to just being a tank because it can't hit very hard. As a fun side note, it can be holding a nugget 1% of the time. There's gold in that there dumpster. And next, found only in Rustling Grass on Route 16, Emolga! Why were you not a Pachirisu evolution? It works on so many levels! I've always thought that maybe this game was not designed to have all new Pokemon, but then at the last second they decided to go with that route and you were planned to be one, but anyway. Emolga is a mixed attacker, with its greatest strength being its speed. The electric flying type is amazing and definitely the biggest reason to consider it. Easily one of the best types ever made. Coupling that with Static being a great counter to physical attackers, it's able to switch in and do a lot of damage. It's not going to be very helpful for the types of Pokemon we're going to be fighting in the upcoming areas, but it starts off with Spark, something that I've already been using, and it learns Electro Ball pretty soon, which does more damage based on the faster Emolga is than its target, complemented by its good speed. It can even learn Agility to make this even better. For once, a fast Pokemon getting Agility actually has purpose. We are getting a good TM for it very soon. You'll know it when you see it, trust me. But that's about it. Not, else, not a whole lot else going on here. And because it won't take us too terribly long, let's just lump in the encounters of an area that we're about to explore anyway, okay? Kinda letting you in on what's going on. What's the opposite of pheasant? Unpheasant. Whatever. At a 5% encounter rate, or 2.5% if you want the not hideous form of it, you can find unpheasant in rustling grass. It's always level 22, has the exact same moves as any Tranquil that you can catch right now, so it's the same thing but with higher stats, though again, its stat distribution is pretty lame. Its form differences are purely cosmetic, bringing it up because it's one of very few Unovan Pokemon that actually has a gender difference in that the males are a lot more showy looking for attracting mates, and the females are more built for flying. Pretty realistic, and I at least like that about it. 
And then 5% of the time, also in Rustling Grass, is Levani. Don't hold your breath for finding it, but it's darn powerful stat-wise. It will always come with the moves Struggle Bug, Razor Leaf, Bug Bite, and String Shot. So, if you do somehow get lucky enough to get it, might as well take it. Sorry things were a little bit disjointed. There were a lot of new encounters to go over, and I had a lot to say about most of them, so... Hopefully you'll forgive me for this route being a little bit unorthodox. I beat every trainer on it before we were finished with all that, and I just happened to run into an odd no. Ottawa grew to level 28 and is learning Revenge. Wow, that gives me yet another move to talk about. Revenge is a physical fighting type move with 60 accuracy that has its damage doubled if you have been struck in the same turn. It's all right. I honestly wish that Ottawa got a better fighting type move. I don't... Uh, do I really need to get rid of anything? I guess... Dig might be the best? Uh, no, I don't think I'll learn it, actually. I, well, I'm not going to use Fury Cutter, let's be real. I've only really used it for fun, never to be actually serious. We got a lot stronger as we were training up against all these different trainers. First off, uh, can't, no, no, not what I meant to do. Okay. Uh, going into our party. We had Rock learn Acrobatics, a move that not many Pokemon learn. 110 power if you are not currently holding an item. It is ruthlessly strstrong and might be a reason to get the Eviolite off of it. I don't know if I'll, well, let's see. Yeah, Pluck does more damage in its current state. You have that berry eating effect. I think maybe I will get the Eviolite off of it. Let's, uh, let's take that. So it actually benefits me to not have that. And then Terabyte. You learn Crunch. One of the best moves that we'll, we will be using on you. 80 power, dark type, might also lower the target's defense. Great move, made even better by our shiny black glasses. If I may show around the route a little bit, it's pretty small, so you can see how I was able to just sweep through it really quickly. There's an item there I didn't get. They said Marvelous Bridge is being checked. What, do they have a bunch of chubby guys standing on it to see how much weight it can take? Okay, no, that was kind of bad. Um, <laughs> I've heard of stuff like that in cartoons and stuff like that. It's just kind of always what I immediately think of when they say they're checking the weight on the bridge just because I saw that in something when I was a kid. We'll take you, there we are. Charcoal, raises the power of fire type moves. I guess you feel slightly less bad than choosing the Miracle Seed if you were given that choice. Uh, up on that way, there was also TM66 Payback. That's a dark type move that does more power if you were struck in the same turn. Kind of funny that we're seeing two things like that so close together. If we use Cut Over This Way on Rapid Fire, we get a rare candy. Loving that, loving it very much. And then, Welcome to the Forest of Illusion, or Lost Learn Forest. I like my name better. Get a big mushroom right off the bat. I think I need to turn my dowsing machine back on. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that's up the cliff. I can't really do anything about that. And then, uh, are you the camper who has parked their butt here for a long time? You know, there are people in this world with many different values. Some people enjoy things you might not think are fun. Having a lot of different values in the world makes it a richer place. That's what I think anyway. I wish more gamers would adopt that mindset. I really enjoy traveling around the world and talking with different people, but the woman who lives here seems to think living quietly by herself is important. That was a little weird how he just suddenly vanished when he was on the edge of the screen. They didn't really do a too good of a job of making that convincing. She will not talk to us. Whatsoever. And you know what we do to people who don't talk to us? We call in legendary Pokemon from another region and then storm their home with them to make them talk! The suspicious woman attacked! Those are words I never thought I'd see in a Pokemon game! Yes, she reveals herself to be... Suicune. Ah. Uh -huh. She will appear as whichever legendary Pokemon the beast that you bring is weak to. But, uh, how about we get to weakening this thing? Use Water Pulse. Also, Ottawa got a level up on the way back here because we ran into that many wild Pokemon and I didn't want to use a repel. Wait a minute, you're not Suicune! Zoro Arc! Well, Zoro might have let us down, but this is the one absolutely one of the most powerful Pokemon you could conceivably have right now. That is, if you have access to an event that's been discontinued for years. Uh, so maybe this time I actually do mean it when I say, wow, look at this really cool Pokemon you can have. I can actually back myself up in that now. 
It's always level 25, not far away from learning Night Slash, but it suffers from the same problems as Zoroa, where it has a great special attack stat that it hardly ever gets to use, and its moves are very limited. If you do have means of using it, you should already know to pack a Psychic or Poison type in the last slot of your party so you can actually use its ability. Also, another fun fact is that this Zoroark is uh, always female. Even though it has a 50-50 gender ratio, no. this one will always be female, possibly a reference to the movie Zoroark Master of Illusion. Kind of a clever little reference there. I kind of like it whenever they bring up the anime or other canon in the games. Doesn't mean that any of those things are canon. I could think of probably about a thousand things from the anime alone that contradict things very openly about the games. Taunt. Uh, maybe, you know what? Last time that we battled something that was really important, I wasn't able to use Thunder Wave out of just not having Haywire with me. Let's switch Haywire in and we'll go for the Thunder Wave. Maybe you can actually have a shining moment this time around. I feel kind of bad for you that I was gonna give you some time in the sun and make you look all cool and praise just how lucky you've been and how well you've served me and also just how you really need to start believing in yourself more Miss Modest Nature, but you haven't really had the best run of it. Get Thunder Wave there. Zoroark's catch rate isn't terribly low. It shouldn't be that hard for us to catch. It hasn't been nearly enough turns to get the full benefit, but you'd look good in a timer ball, and I'm pretty confident that we don't need that high of a catch rate on a Pokeball to get you, so let's see. Wow, could I have ever been more wrong? <laughs> All right, I don't want to strike you again, but Haywire's getting pretty, Hay or Haywire's been pretty weak. What do I mean getting pretty weak? I guess Ultra Ball? One! <laughs> Sheesh, not that low of a catch rate my hind end. <laughs> One! <laughs> this is what I get for not first turn quick balling you, because I want to fight you the legit way. I'm sorry, Haywire. I'm doubly sorry for making you get shown up by Terabyte once again, because you can probably handle this a lot better than it could. I know that you have at least one Dark-type move. Terabyte makes a lot of sense as it resists that. Huh. Pokeball, because why not? One. Oi. One. Two. Three. Knew you had a dark type move. Was correct about that much at least. One, two, three, click. Zoroark was caught. Pretty cool Pokemon, pretty neat, pretty good capabilities. It's a little weird that they give you both Zoroark and Zoroa through separate events when Zoroa is fully capable of evolving and these Pokemon aren't even legendary, they're just locked behind an event for really no reason at all. Illusion Fox Pokemon, each has the ability to fool a large group of people simultaneously. They protect their lair with illusory scenery. Well, I guess you can fool all of the people all of the time if you are a Zoroark. We'll just throw you into the PC. So this was Zoroark's home then. Where are we? This is not where we talked to that lady. Zoroark was using its illusion to trick people and Pokemon. It wanted to keep people away from its lair. I heard this place was suspicious, so I came to have a look, but it looks like I was tricked as well. Zoroark really reacted strongly to the Pokemon you have with you. They must be, there must be some, some history there. A quarrel or something. Such a beautiful field in a place like this. It's almost as if the lo this lovely scenery is the illusion. How very deep. The camper is now gone. I trying to see if there's anything else of note around here. No, there's not. All right. A lot of people have been asking me, hey, you know, you have the once in a lifetime opportunity to actually get Zoroa and Zoroark and Victini and all these cool other Pokemon. Why aren't you using those on your team? Well, Victini, it's the case that I don't ever use legendary Pokemon on my team, just as simple as that. I think that they're very powerful and they are really cool, and of course I recommend them, but I kind of like using more unlikely heroes. And then just for Zoroa and Zoroark, I think it would be kind of lame to kind of be showing you how to win battles with these weird event Pokemon that you can't possibly be obtaining, and 
I mean, I know that they're not overpowered, but I think it would just be kind of weak if my strategy involved things that are long cut off and no longer a regular part of the game. They're kind of just here as a bonus thing so that you can see what those events were like, but I won't really be abusing the power of them or anything. Anyway. Hold a minute. I remember that there was something back on the back end of this route. This sign? Marvelous bridge. Truly marvelous. And also a bridge. <laughs> Forgot to point that out. I remember liking that sign, but I didn't remember exactly why. Anyway, we have visited the very remote Anvil Town, visited Route 16, gotten in lots of training very quickly. Again, sometimes Unova's a little bit too fast. And we battled against the rare mythical Zoroark, who isn't actually mythical at all. We're gonna head back to Anvil Town to listen to that lullaby for trains, and next time on Pokemon Black and White, with nothing else to do in the Nimbasa area, we are gonna be heading off to the amusement park to at long last challenge Elisa. See you guys then.